Welcome to Doddington Place Gardens in Kent. I'm here today to meet some fascinating birds of prey. The picturesque landscape at Doddington is set in the grounds of a Victorian mansion, abundant with many plants and wildlife that stretches 10 acres of land. The Hawking Centre is the main attraction here at Dollington, with the falconry experiences proving to be a hit with the public. Home to many birds including owls, falcons and vultures. I will be meeting Joe, the owner, to find out about what goes on here at the Hawking Centre. Hi Joe. Hi Darren. So uh, how long have you been at the Hawking Centre? Oh well we started the company about 15 years ago now. Um, we've been here at Doddington Place Gardens for four years. And how many birds have you got here? At the moment, um, that's a very good question because it changes quite often, but somewhere around about 30, 35 birds. And uh, what is the biggest bird that you've got here? The biggest bird um, is a bald eagle whose name is Arena. Um, she's a, a female bald eagle, so the girl birds of prey are always bigger than the boys because they're actually in charge of the boys. Here at the Hawking Centre they train all the birds to fly for the falconry experiences. I've been lucky enough to be the first person to see Irina fly. Julie is a falconer here at the Hawking Centre. She takes care of many different birds of prey. I'm about to meet the youngest vulture. This is Morticia. Uh, she's a hooded vulture. They're the second smallest vulture from Africa, which is why I can hold her on my arm quite easily without getting quite sore. They come a lot bigger than this. Uh, Morticia here, she's been hand raised by us, so she's actually rather sweet for a vulture. Um, so she tends to like a little head scratch most of the time. Uh, she likes to change people's perceptions of vultures. They're not just the ugly birds that you see waiting for things to die on nature documentaries. They can actually be very, very sweet and they've got great personalities and bags of it. Would she behave differently to someone else? She uh, would, yes. Yeah. If she doesn't know you, she wouldn't let you stroke her on her head. So they do form bonds with people and they do pick favourites. If she didn't like you, you'd know about it. Is there any uh, character traits that would surprise the public? Yeah, oh, absolutely. She's got the best sense of humour. Everything she does makes me laugh. The amount of times I have to chase her around the aviary trying to get my cleaning sponge back off her. Um, if she wants the perch the other vulture's sitting on, she'll come up behind her and just pull on her tail or her leather equipment. She'll move and she'll steal her seat. She also trips her up by pulling her equipment. So they've got amazing characters. They really do. They're very misunderstood birds. I was given the opportunity to hold Morticia. There you go. Okay. And I'm just going to let her off. That's it. She's quite heavy. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, she's, let's say, she's light for a vulture. Mm -hmm. They do come a lot heavier than this. And I can't actually feel much of a tight grip on there. Mm, so her feet are a lot more like chicken feet. They're more designed for running around on the ground. They're not the locking talons that you'll see on your hawks and your eagles and your owls because they don't have to kill using their feet. All her power's in her beak. Yeah. So a, a vulture's a kind of a, a bird that you're really interested in? Kind of as a, as a, a business. We just love to support the vultures because if they weren't there, um, you know, all of the kind of dead animal situations in Africa that you have they would just all mount up and become really, really, you know, sort of a health risk. And they're so under threat at the moment from lots of different areas. The birds are all fed dependent on their weight. Morticia here gets three chicks a day. The chicks come from an egg farming company that donates them to the Hawking Centre instead of disposing of them. Vultures aren't always able to get a regular supply of food in the wild, 
We spoke to Julie about the common threats that they are facing. So is, it, is the biggest, what is the biggest risk do you think to the vultures and the other birds out there at the moment? To be honest, poisoning is one of the main ones, but one, probably the biggest one is livestock use and land changes. So the way farming methods are changing um, and the way things, the land's managed as well. Loss of habitat, loss of perches in various areas for them to actually nest is one of the main problems as well. There's also a rather large black market trade in their body parts as well. Um, um, a lot of people believe if you eat vulture brains and body parts, you're going to gain some sort of clairvoyant abilities and you're going to be able to predict the future. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I can't think of any bird I'd really want to eat less, to be honest. <laughs> but it's just <laughs> one of those things that we can't. Volpro, a vulture conservation charity based in Africa, are working hard to educate local farmers about these endangered creatures. I'm writing a book um, on vultures, which is all going to be um, geared to promote the work that Vultpro, uh, Vulture Conservation Charity, are doing out in Africa and be sold in aid of raising funds for them. One of the primary things we're doing is getting uh, a plan together for two members of staff, two members of the team here at Falconers, to go out there once a year for a few weeks to be hands-on helping Vultpro uh, with their conservation work. In order to support the charity, People are able to purchase wristbands, t-shirts and other merchandise to raise money and spread awareness. This trip to Africa sounds really exciting. Where is it you'll be going? Uh, we're going to, it's going to be based at Pretoria, which okay. is where Volpo's headquarters are. But they do travel a lot in search of injured vultures that need saving and various surveys that they do. So we're going to be travelling quite out through a lot of the area. Going to be amazing. And what is it you'll actually be doing? What's your part? So we're going to really be getting down, hands-on, ground root stuff. We're going to be helping them bring in vultures, care for the vultures they've got at the centre. They've got a lot of vultures on site that are not able to be released. Uh, injuries such as wing loss, various things like that. So we'll be helping clean and feed those, uh, educate local people. Uh, they have a lot of children groups come in. They do a lot of work with local farmers as well, so we'll be going out. They also run a vulture restaurant uh, where they have a source, regular source of clean meat as it were with no pesticides, no poisons in that can do them any harm uh, and they put that out every day and make sure vultures have got a, a clean safe area to come down and eat so we'll also be running that for them uh, and anything else that they need. They also take in other birds of prey every now and again so we never know what we're going to come across. Vultures were critically endangered in the wild, however with the good work that Volpro have been carrying out through education and captive breeding programs the vultures' numbers that were so badly hit are now slowly turning around. It's got to a point where uh, so many species are now listed as critically endangered. So it's got to that point where you know something has to be done or they're at real risk of, of being lost forever. Do you think that's actually going to happen? Do you think? I think I'm hoping that we've caught it just in time. Yeah. yeah, it did get to a very, very tight stage in India where um, if it wasn't for the kind of like captive breeding programs, I think they probably would have died out but I think we've caught it just in time, yeah. Well, I've had an amazing time at Doddington Place Gardens here in Kent, learning about the vultures.